Fine. Okay. Nice. Um, this first problem says how many phosphate ions are present in 3.01 <laughs> times 10 to the 23rd formula units of copper 2 phosphate. So the first thing that I'm going to do on a problem like this is I'm going to write my formula for copper 2 phosphate because that's going to help me know how many ions there are in one, um, so this is a two plus, and phosphate is a three minus, so three. So in one uh, formula unit, we have two uh, phosphate ions, okay? Um, we have less than a mole of our uh, copper two phosphate, but um, that's okay. It doesn't matter that we have less than one mole because we know how many formula units we have and we know that in every formula unit like we have here, there are two of our PO4 ions. So we have 3.01 times 10 to the 23rd formula units. One formula unit is two of our phosphate ions, okay? So all we have to do is multiply two times 3.01. Two times three is six. Two times one is two. So this would be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd PO4, three minus. Yeah. Are we supposed to yeah, so I, I printed them off like that so you did have some additional room to work out near the problem mm -hmm. instead of. Uh, so, with the ions, yeah. do you just write the number and then. The, the formula number. for the ion. Okay. Yeah. So, it's basically whatever your ions are and your number and your subscript of it? Yes. So the only thing is if um, this made the. If 2 times 3 made it bigger than. Um, nine, then we would have to change our exponent here. But it, and we'll look at an example that does that later on. But this, since it didn't get above nine, we can just leave our exponent the same. Okay, does that make sense? All right, the second one. So the gas sample contains 16 grams of CH4, 16 grams of O2, 16 grams of SO2, and 33 grams of CO2. We want to know the total number of moles of gas in a sample. So we're going to do some approximation on this problem, okay? Um, we have, we know that CH4, carbon is about 12, and hydrogen is about 1. So uh, that's going to give us, about 16 grams per mole. Okay, we're, we're approximating, right? So it's not exactly. But we have 16 grams of CH4. So 16 grams divided by 16 grams per mole means we're going to have one mole of our CH4. Uh, for O2, we have six, um, oxygen is 16, 16 plus 16 is 32. And, uh, grams per mole. Uh, so 32, and we have 16 grams here. 16 is half of 32. So we have 0.5 moles of our O2. And then SO2, what is our uh, average atomic mass for um, sulfur? 32.06, so we're going to call that 32. Make this 64. And we have 16 
Graham's there? Well, we said that um, 16 is half of 32, uh, and that shouldn't be 32 there, that should say 64. Um, here. Uh, so, and 32 is half of 64. So, one fourth or 0 0.25 moles. Uh, and then for CO2, carbon's about 12, O2 is 32, so that gives us about 44 grams per mole. And we have 33 grams of that, 44. So, um, I'm going to reduce this fraction to three fourths, which I can I remember that three fourths is 0.75 moles, and then we can look here: one mole plus 0.5 moles, 1.5 plus 0.25 is 1.75 plus 0.75 is going to give us. 2.5. So see, when, when you do some approximation, even though we, we had to do some math, we, we, could, we could do that without using a calculator. We can reduce the fractions down. We can, we can do that uh, sort of thing on that. Is there questions on a problem like this? All right, our third question says, how many grams of calcium fluoride contain 38 grams of fluoride at? Okay, so again, we have a compound. So my first step is I'm going to write the formula for the compound. So calcium is a 2 plus, and fluoride is a 1 minus. So that's going to give us CaF2. Okay. Um, calcium has a mass of about 40, and fluorine, fluorine has a mass of about 20, but it's exactly 19, so um, that is going to give us 38 grams of our fluorine for 78 grams of our whole compound. And we know that 30 grams is fluorine, which matches up there. So we just need basically our molar mass to say how much, how many grams contains the 38 grams of fluorine. <coughs> say what? We just need 78. That's all we need. Okay, that the top one is calcium. Yeah. Is yeah, I know. I know you're getting the total of calcium. Why does the state contain 30, 38 grams of water down there? It wants to know how many you have in the whole thing. We have 38. How, ma how, much of our, how many grams of our compound do we have? If we know that we have 38 grams of fluorine. So I was just checking that. Yeah. Uh, so this question says, how many oxygen atoms are there in 22.0 grams of carbon dioxide? Um, so, or we kind of need to figure out how many moles of this that we have, okay? Um, we know the mass of our compound is 22 grams. And uh, carbon dioxide, remember carbon is 12, and two uh, oxygens, 32, so about 44. That's our 
molar mass. So that means that we have half of a mole. Okay? Um, so we know that if we had one mole of our compound, that there would be 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd um, molecules there. And we know that um, there would be uh, two atoms of oxygen per molecule. So let's take a look at this. 0.5 moles of CO2. And we have one mole of CO2 is our 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. And one molecule has two atoms of oxygen. So when I look at this, in my head, it's easiest to do 2 times 0.5 is 1. <coughs> 1 times 6.022 is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of oxygen. Any questions so far? All right. Um, this one says a compound has an empirical formula of C2H4O. An independent analysis gave a uh, value of 132 grams for its molar mass. We want to find the molecular formula of the compound. So we know that... Um, we have our empirical formula, and um, we have the molecular formula, molar mass. So we need to approximate what is our molar mass of our empirical formula, okay? So two carbons is going to be about 24, four hydrogens is about four, and oxygen is 16. So, uh, 44? Right? 44. Yeah. Okay. I was just making sure I did my math. For some reason, when I get, like, super close up to the board and when I'm, like, here, it's harder for me to, like, do the math in my head than if I take a step back over here. I don't, like, it's been that way my whole teaching career, but that's, like, that's always how it's been. So we have our molar mass of 132 divided by our molar mass of our empirical formula of 44. Okay, so at this point, I kind of look at this and I'm like, that's not something that I easily can, can just say off the, the top of my head. But I see that I have a 2 and a 4 here, so I know that there's a common multiple of 2. So I can divide both of those by 2 and get, uh, this is 22, and 66, and then I can keep doing, doing that, and so, you could do that, yeah, yeah, you could do that too. So 6 divided by 2 means my factor is 3. So now I need to multiply the empirical formula by 3. Well, I, so Jerem said you could do 120 and 40, and you could do um, 12 and 4. Yeah, so if it says 12 and 4, it's the same thing. Oh, okay, because so, it's not close so, to yeah, so you, you yeah. take out those. Okay. You just broke it up like that. Because 132 minus 120 gives you the 12. 44 minus 4 gives you 40. And then you can do. And then again. And these are both going to give us the 3, right? Uh huh. Okay. So, if we 
multiply this by three, which is our um, molecular formula. Yeah. Questions on that problem? Is that a sugar? Is that a sugar? Mm. It's not. It's not glucose or sucrose. I mean, there's lots of sugars. I. Um, it's possible that it could be. It wouldn't be a salt, no. Yeah. Salts are ionic compounds. Well, yeah, but like like salts, salts always have like a certain ones that will make it a salt. Mm -hmm. it, it could be a sugar. I don't honestly know what that is off the top of my head. Um, all right, so this problem. I will tell you that this problem is probably the hardest out of the ten that I, as I was working through these without in this piece cake. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, so we're going to talk about how to work through this problem. Uh, what? Is the essence of Jesus like one of the big solid and gas? Yes. Yeah. So in parentheses, solid or gas. <coughs> so we have a very stable compound, SF6, um, that's made by burning sulfur uh, in the atmosphere of fluorine. Okay, if you need 2.5 moles of SF6, you will need to use how many moles of these others? Okay, so um, when I look at this, um, 2.5 um, is our base, like the base amount that we need of our product here. We need 2.5 of this. Um, and we're basing everything off of this. So what I did, um, I also looked at my uh, coefficient in front of F2, 24, and 8, and those have common multiples. So I said, I know how much I want of this. My base unit, I'm going to say, is equivalent to 1. So I'm going to reduce this by dividing by 8 on all of my coefficients. So this is one now. 24 divided by eight is three. And then one divided by eight, this one is probably the, the one that's the hardest, what? What? I was saying it was. 0.125? Yeah, it is 0.125. Okay. So now, I know that 2.5 is equivalent to a factor of 1, okay? So I know how much that is. I'm going to take 3 times 2.5, and 3 times 2 is 6, and there's 2 halves, so 7, and then 1 half left over gives me 7.5. 7 and then, so that means now I can eliminate... B and D, because I have more than 7.5 moles of those. So now I have down to 0.313 moles of S8 or 8 moles of S8. And my factor that I'm multiplying by 2.5 is 0.125. So it's going to be our 0.313. So A is our answer for that. So what if you don't reduce on the uh, coefficients? The coefficients? How would you do it without that? Like if you didn't have a common multiple? Or what? Yeah, like, well, like right now we don't have a common multiple. Yeah, so on, the, on this like, one. I didn't see that, and I just went 2.5 times 8 20. And then, um, so we got one more. So now those, you know those 24s will work, but if you, but if you divide the 20 by 8, you do a, how do you get 7.5? Yeah, you just divide by 8. Yeah, you can do that. So, so when you know how much of one thing you want, you want to set everything equivalent to that. 
And that's why I said I wanted to reduce this to a one okay. here because I know how much of my product I want. Okay. And in chemical equations, we have ratios of everything. So if I can figure out a ratio for my two reactants to my product, then, and I know how much of this it, it is, these factors times how much of my product I have will tell me how much of my reactants okay. I have. And, and like I said, as I worked through these multiple choice questions, I think that this is probably the hardest one of them to kind of see what to do from there. Okay? Yeah. Is it point three one three? Um, so I is, I did a little bit of assumption here. Um, one divided by eight is going to be point one two five. Um, so. Knowing some of your fractions will help you. Um, because we know how much of our product we have, and we can set everything, like we can figure out what factor these are in comparison to what we know. And so when I divided by eight, that made this one, okay? And I know that that one is equal to 2.5 moles. 24 divided by 8 is 3, and 3 times 2.5 gives us 7.5 moles. But why did you do 3 times 2.5? Because the factor, like the relationship, the ratio of this reactant to this product is a factor of 3. If, if we set it up like, like this, we have 2.5 moles of SF6, in our equation we have 8 moles of SF6, and we have 24 moles of F2. Maybe, maybe this is a little bit easier to see. Um, 24 divided by 8 is still 3, right? Yeah. 3 times 2.5 gives us that 7.5 moles. So even if it did, uh, even if it did yeah. uh, reduce the unit to 1.5, yeah. it still be like that. Yeah. That seems better. So, so for some people to visualize it and write it out like this, this um, on your scratch paper might be easier for you. For others that maybe don't like to write down as much, it's easier to kind of just think through those things. Yeah. So you didn't have to divide by eight. That's just to make it easier. No, it, okay. it's just to make it easier because when you do, when you actually do your calculation, you're dividing it by eight. Yeah. So I just was trying to to take a step out on that. And then for for S eight, we have two point five moles of SF6. We're still going to divide by our 8 moles of SF6, and this is 1 mole of S8. So it's still that fraction that we wrote here times 2.5. It's still the same thing. It's just the approach that you're taking to get there is different. Why, why not for the answer? Why did they do? Why did they just multiply both of those numbers by eight and make it a lot easier so you're not like reducing it to thirds? For saying? for these answers here? Well, like for the answer C. Or wait, wait. Oh, we got A. Yeah. Yeah. Because you multiply by two point five, you're one eight. So you you That's have to multiply by one point two five. Like point one two five. Three. Yeah. So you can't did have you know that one as your answer. Yeah. If we started with the, just the fluorine, we divide them all by 24, right? Mm -hmm. And multiply whatever moles we got in there, correct? Mm -hmm. okay, yeah, like if you were, you're yeah. saying if you were given your amount of F2 yeah. and trying to find your amount of S8 and your amount of F2. 
That's absolutely cute. Alright. Um, Alright, number seven. Propane burns in the presence of oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water vapor. So I know that I have O2 and that's producing CO2 and H2O. Okay. Um, propane, it's a little, it is a little bit hard to do this, this problem without knowing the equation for propane. On my questions, hot sauce? Yeah. Okay. He's telling me, he's telling me to try it, but it smells like hot um, sauce. On my multiple choice questions, I'm not going to give you something that you don't know the formula or can't write the formula based off that. So I'm going to tell you that propane is C3H8. Okay? So now, if we take a look at this, um, how many total moles of gas are produced when 50% of an 88.2 gram sample of propane combusts? We're not balanced, is that what you said? Yeah. What should we do to balance it? Sure. Uh -huh. Three times three, three times two is six, four, so ten, so that means that's a five. So yeah, balance equations are always up. I, when I'm working through it, sometimes I don't think about that until I get to needing my balanced equation. So, 50% um, of 88.2, 44.1, okay, so that's how much of our propane is going to combust. Okay, so now we're going to do a little bit of approximation again. We know that 44.1 grams of our propane, C3H8, is combusting. Um, three carbons is going to give us about 36, and then eight hydrogens is about eight, so that's going to give us a molar mass of about 44 grams per mole. Okay, um, and this is our C3H8. In the equation, we have one mole of that. And we want to know the total moles of gas. Um, carbon dioxide we know is a gas, and water vapor is also a gas. So we need to do this for both our CO2 and our H2O. Okay, so we would do like one at a time and then add them? Yeah, yeah. But let's look at this. 44.1, 44, we're just going to cancel those out. And we have three moles of CO2. So we should be able to, again, with water, if we set this up again, we're going to be able to cancel that out yet again for our water. So, like, let's do we need to show our work on No, I'm just... These are a multiple choice. So I want you to be able to see those things. You know, for me, once I I found my molar mass, I I did write it out the first time to check to make sure that because if this isn't one, then then um you know it would be whatever this fraction equals. But these would still cancel out. So the second time when I worked it, I didn't write it out again. I just said, oh, what is my coefficient on oxygen? That's 4. So 3 plus 4 means I'm going to have a total of 7 moles of gas. Yeah. So on your AP exam, 
Um, it's about 1.5 minutes per multiple choice question. Um, uh, there are 60 on the AP exam. Okay. Um, I'm gonna start you guys off with a a longer amount of time per uh, multiple choice question. Um, about two minutes per multiple choice question, and then as the year progresses, we might. So, yes, um, but also on your unit test, because remember how we talked about no calculator on the multiple choice portion, I'm going to allot you guys about two minutes per multiple choice question. Oh, I thought you were here yesterday, but not Yeah, All right, that's okay. All right. Um, silly. <laughs> So, uh, practice eight. A given sample of a hydrocarbon is burned and complete, burned completely, and it produces 0.44 grams of CO2 and 0.27 grams of H2O. Yeah. I don't know that this would be the one I would recommend to do on your own. Let's try it. I mean, you can't. Okay. <laughs> Do it on your own. We're never going to learn if we don't do it on our own. Yes. Well, they go on the other side. So, what am I supposed to do? So, this is um, that combustion analysis uh, of the unknown to find the empirical formula is what you're doing. So, this is kind of what we were looking at yesterday, Logan, where you take the mass of your CO2. And you convert that to um, mole, uh, moles of CO2 is what you want to convert it to. And then you would do the same with your water. Water is about 18 grams per mole. Okay. On this one, 0.44 and 44. 44 divided by 44 is 1, but we would need to move our decimal in, um, since it's two places over here, it'd be 0.0. 100. 100. Um, and then I know that 18 goes into 27 one time. So then I just did this to figure out what I had uh, left. To, and then 18, 9, 1 point. Okay, so then once you get to this point, you can probably find your empirical formula from here. Yeah. What do you see? <laughs> so once you get to your moles of, so this would be moles of carbon, and this would be moles of hydrogen, what do you do after you get? So, Carbon plus oxygen gives us CO2. I guess I left this stuff off here. Um, oh, plan one. Gotcha. Yeah, but then, uh, 
Um, so the, when we did this in the notes, um, the way I had it on the screen, I had um, one mole of hydrogen, uh, or one mole of water per one mole of hydrogen. And um, you guys said that this made more sense to have the two moles of H2O to the two moles of H2. But that's just telling us how many moles of hydrogen there are. It's not of that H. this is H2. Of, yeah, how many moles of H? This equation. So I don't love the setup of it because it's, we would typically label this as H2. But you would get the same answer either way that you work through it. What are you confused? Doesn't it start with hydrocarbon? It is a hydrocarbon, yes. And a hydrocarbon is just some number of carbon and some number of hydrogen, yes. So we're trying to find that, which one of these hydrocarbons is it. So we need to find the empirical form. Why would you get H2 by itself between the reactions with hydrogen? Oh, here? Because it produced. Um, 0.27 grams of H2O. Isn't that the end? Uh, yes, so it's saying that um, this is telling us how much hydrogen is coming from the hydrocarbon to produce this much H2O. And same thing with this. This is telling us how many moles of carbon is coming from our hydrocarbon when it combusts to form this much CO2. So you So we need to multiply both of these by two, right? So our empirical formula. C2H3. Um, after this, I'll, I'll go back to the problem that we did in the notes that was like this, and we can take a look at that one. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Don't worry the jump, but just keep going to the. Make sure I'm doing it still. Don't worry about it. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, so I said 27 divided by 18. I know that 18 is going to go into 27 one time at least. And so then I said, okay, how much is left after it goes in there one time? Nine, and that's about half of... So 1.5, but then because this isn't 27, it's 0.27, we have to move our decimal over two places, and that's how I got the 0 0.01 back. So if, if, if your numbers look pretty similar, but this is a decimal and this um, is not, then you can just move your decimal. Like you can use whole numbers and then just move your decimal to get your answer. And that's a way to save yourself from having to use the calculator on that. Why did it did the end? Then I realized it's a verbal formula, so you find that's all we've got. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I get it. I get it. The way like, I did it for the H2O, I did like the, I divided them both by, because I think they're not three nine. Why did you divide by? Well, that's just the way I saw it. Okay. You got the same answer as what you're telling me? Okay, I don't know that I fully understand your way, but if you got the same answer, great. Um, I just would want to make sure that that would work on something else. So when we go back and look at that problem from the notes, let's see if that same process will work for you. Okay. All right, uh, practice number nine. Uh, two grams of H2 reacts with 32 grams of O2 in an explosion. The final gas mixture 
will contain. Okay, so on this one, we kind of need to figure out what our limiting reactant is on this because we have both. Um, what? So H2O is reacting with O2, and that's going to form H2O, right? We know we know that when H2 or H2, yeah, sorry, my bad. When H2 and O2 react, it forms H2O, right? Yeah. Okay. So that, so there we have our balanced equation. Um, so if we have two moles of H2, uh, and then, um, or I'm sorry, we have two grams of flip. We need to start with or two grams. What's given to us in the problem? Is what we need to start with. Our two grams of H2. Convert to moles. One mole of H2 is approximately two grams. Yeah. And in our equation, we have two moles of H2. And we have two moles of water. So we can cancel that out. And that is one mole of water. And then for our oxygen, again, 16 plus 16 is 32, so our molar mass of oxygen is going to cancel out there. We have one mole of O2, and we have two moles of H2O. So this and this will cancel. That means we have 0.5 moles of water. So the amount, what, two. Why is it two? two? Or two, yeah. I was flipping that fraction in my head. Thank you, guys. Okay, so two moles of H2O. Oh. So that means that hydrogen is going to limit it. Okay? So also, it also helps me to uh, visualize this, that we have our two moles of H2, and then this is our O2. I'm going to write this down here. In the balanced equation, this is what it looks like visually, okay? Uh, so, H2 limits it, so we're going to, um, when the water runs out, or when the H2 runs out, that's also when we stop forming water, okay? Um, so we know we're going to have water in our uh, final gas mixture. A clue is it tells us that it is a mixture. Um, Oxygen is going to be an excess. Excess reactants, you have some left over at the end. So we should have water and oxygen in our final, yeah, let's see. Yes. In our final. What I'm saying, like, like the very over two, that's how it, I just got it. Like, it's point. Oh, okay, yeah, no, that makes sense. I didn't, I didn't understand what you were saying. Okay, I was like, I don't know where you're getting three from, but if it works for you, great. Yes, sir. Yeah. Would O2 be a part of the lab? Yes. Say what? O2 be a product. Yes. You, it wouldn't be a product, but you would have some in, in the end because some of it didn't get used up by the reaction. So it would just be your excess. Out of that, would you end up in the reactant, some of it wouldn't even reach the other side. Yes. Yeah. So you would still have some in the reaction container. 
So basically, the the problem like that is that every time you access it, once whatever you're doing, you're living. Yep. That's a lot of things. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Lithium, we said, is 6.94. We're going to call that 7. Uh, chlorine is 35.45. For our purposes, I'm going to call that 35. So that gives us about uh, 42 grams per mole for lithium chloride. Okay. Um, and so then we wanted to look at the ratio between it. Uh, so seven grams of our sample is lithium to our 44, 42 there. I can reduce this to one seven, which is fourteen uh, percent. I don't know what the decimal is for fourteen percent, but what? Seven. Six. Six times seven. One six. Yeah. Okay. All right. Is it is one six about fourteen percent? It's sixteen. Sixteen percent. It's close enough that we and we could do this like seven and thirty six then, and then like we said yesterday, kind of do the about. But sixteen is close enough. I I already have felt like this is probably not true, so that's what led me to think. And it's close. It's pretty close to fourteen. I'm confident in saying I'm going to go with D for my answer. 42. So um, lithium is about 7 grams and chlorine is 30. So the whole, the whole mass of it is 42. Yeah. Okay. Any, any questions about these multiple choices? So, in your textbook, after all of the uh, multiple or after all of the like problems that you guys have been working on, there is an AP review multiple choice section in your book. That would be my suggestion to try to work through those without a calculator, and then um, so my plan is uh, tomorrow evening, yeah, you won't be here, but tomorrow evening, I will post a key to the study guide, and then I'll also send out the multiple choice answers from that AP review section in your textbook. So it is an AP review so honestly, like if I was, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna grade that multiple choice review, but I think it is good practice because there are some additional stoic problems in there, like the mass spec um, graphs that are there on that left page. Um, to take a look, because I'll tell you, there is a mass spec graph on on the multiple choice on your test. Um, so to kind of look at some of those questions that you don't necessarily have to do the math with, that's why I didn't include them in this because I wanted to focus on the problems that you needed to kind of do the approximation with the math. Um, yes. Mass spec. Um, so a mass spectrometer will help you identify um, what is in the compound or the um, mass of the isotope um, that make up the average atomic mass. Um, no, we will not use one. We do not have access to one because they are rather large pieces of equipment and rather large. Um, you just need to know that that is a way of finding the um, percent composition and the percent abundance for um, your different isotopes. So, yes. My, first off, if you do not have your homework problems done, you should get those done so that I can check those off on Friday, okay? I will get my paper out and check people off that have stuff done today. Secondly, um, your study guide, I would also be working through those problems because remember there's 
some problems that I included that weren't in the homework. Some of them are similar, but some of them are different. So take a look at the ones that you need to look at. Um, and then I would set aside some time between now and Friday and, and try to do the AP review multiple choice questions for chapter three on your own without a calculator. See what you can do to um, find the answers on those. And then um, if you get done before Thursday evening, you can check with me on that stuff. But um, I will post a key to the study guide and to the multiple choice review questions on Thursday evening, probably about 7. Yeah, so after the questions that you have been working on, it has read at the top of the page, at the bottom of the page. I'm sorry, it's the side of the page. So those are the game lovers. Well, again, look at it, and if it's a problem that you're like, I don't need to um, do a basic stoic calculation because I, I understand how to do those, you don't have to. Like, I'm not greedy in this day. That's why I'm going to post the key. Yes.